So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how you can set up a MIDI foot remote with Logic Live Loops. This is fantastic if you wanna perform with Logic Live Loops on stage, you wanna record your cells, you wanna play back your cells, and you need to trigger them with a MIDI controller. So if that's something you're interested in, then stay tuned to this video. Hey, what's up? Hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to another video. Now today, I'm gonna show you how you can MIDI map a MIDI foot controller to control Logic Live Loops. A few weeks ago, I got a question asking, how can I control Logic Live Loops with a MIDI foot controller? And today, I'm gonna show you how you can set that up. Now what I have right here is the Nectar Pacer MIDI foot remote. We've talked about this before on the channel. It's one of my favorite MIDI remotes out there in the world. I think it's super versatile and it's absolutely awesome. If you want a review of this MIDI foot remote, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll put a video together. But one of the really cool things about this MIDI foot controller is the fact we can basically customize all of the buttons on the foot switch to send a specific MIDI CC note, uh, a specific type of MIDI command. So for example, it could be a MIDI trigger, it could be momentary, so you hold it down to trigger the command. It could be toggle, so you like click it once and it stays on, then you click it again to switch it off. There's so many different things we can do with each foot switch. And another cool thing we can also do with the foot switch is we can customize the color that it displays when we trigger the command. So right now I have these set to be green, but because the Nectar Pacer has full RGB spectrum, I can also set them up to send red for record style commands and so on and so forth. Now what we are going to do today is, I'm just gonna show you the process you can undergo for setting up your commands that you want to control with a MIDI controller. This could be a control surface that you use on your desk, it could be a MIDI foot remote like I have with me here. Whatever MIDI related equipment you're using, I'm gonna show you how you can set it up inside of Logic Pro X. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I've booted up Logic Pro X and I'm right here, I'm inside of a Live Loops Grid template. Now before we continue with today's video, if you want to learn more about Logic Live Loops, check out my guide using the link in the description down below. This is basically a full guide telling you how to get started inside of Logic Live Loops and explaining all of the brand new features that were added inside of the 10.5 update. It's super handy if you have no idea where to start inside of Logic Live Loops. Now I have my Nectar Pacer plugged into the computer already, so it's been detected by Logic automatically. One of the awesome things about Logic is as soon as you plug something in, it automatically sets it up ready to roll, so we didn't have to set anything up in the preferences. So what we're going to do is, we are going to head into the preferences over here, so up to Logic Pro X. You can see we have the preferences tab, and we're just gonna scroll over to MIDI. Now this is what you'll be presented with when you boot up the MIDI tab. Now by default, my Logic Pro X had this setting that we're about to change set to off. So if you take a look here, we have this option called MIDI Remote. Now, originally mine was set to off, which meant it wasn't sending in like receiving MIDI Remote style data. So what we are going to do is we are going to switch this to on so our Nectar Pacer is going to work correctly. Now, if you wanna check if your MIDI controller surface has been detected correctly, you can go over here to inputs and you can see here we have all of the MIDI devices that I have had plugged in to my iMac. So right here is the Nectar Pacer that we are going to use in today's video. And this is where you can also enable and disable devices. So if you didn't want to use a Nectar Pacer, you could just switch it off. And as you can see, it says it's no longer being used by Logic. So I've got it, both of them selected so we can use all 16 channels on the Nectar Pacer. And now we're going to proceed to the next section. So what we're now going to do is we are now going to set up some custom controller assigns on our Nectar Pacer. And the way we're going to do that is just by heading again up to the top left corner and we're going to go down to control surfaces. Now I'm going to head into the learn assignment tab here. So it's going to open up the controller assign tab. Now from this point here, we can go about a variety of ways of actually configuring our MIDI controller. Now I'm going to show you the most convenient way to sort of get started and then I'll show you a more advanced way so you can set up and fine tune your commands for future use. So the, what we are going to do is first thing we want to create a brand new zone. So if you take a look here we have some preset zones that are already inside of Logic, sort of generic things like shortcuts you can see you got like all these different things here 
And these are usually um, presets for like MIDI devices you've used in the past that have been sort of like automatically set up. But we are going to set up our own zone by just clicking this little plus button here. And I'm just gonna call this live loops because that's what we are wanting to control in today's video with our MIDI control surface. So now we basically have a brand new preset that we can start setting stuff up. So here we have the modes. We'll just create a new mode. For example, we'll just leave this as the default name, new mode. And now we can start editing our control settings here and also our parameters. Now, the simplest way to get started is by utilizing the learn mode in the bottom right over here. So if I just close out this tab from earlier and I just move this window over. So we want to make sure that the learn mode is toggled on. So it's blue down in the bottom right corner. And then we just simply select the command that we want to map. So let's say we want to launch scene one. So we'll select scene one, we'll launch it. You can see right now the parameter live loop scene launch has appeared over here, but it hasn't got a control command mapped. So all we simply got to do is we just click on this here and then we press the button on our control surface that we want to map and you can see it now says learned. We can then exit out of learn mode over here and if I just restart my set and I just click this button on my foot remote, you can see it automatically now launches our scene. Now that's the super simple way to go about MIDI mapping your controller assigns. But you do soon run into a problem because sometimes you can't basically trigger the command, for example, like a record cell command and then map that record command to the foot switch because you've already launched the command. It starts to get really convoluted and complicated. So what you want to do is instead is actually set them up with your mouse and keyboard. And once you learn how to do this, it probably will end up being faster than mapping them with the learn mode and clicking the buttons on your foot remote. So what we're going to do is I am just simply going to head into learn mode just to speed up our process. And I'm just going to, in this tab here, I'll just select a button. So we'll click learn mode, select a button. And now I have mapped foot switch two to this second command. Now, obviously we don't want the parameter to be stop, which is obviously our transport stop over here, which it has just automatically mapped. We maybe want this to be something like record into a cell. So the way we do this is actually inside of this assign parameter controller over here. So the most important thing to note is this here, the uh, class and also the command. So right now we're running a global command and that global command is the stop. So that's this functionality in the transport controls over here. But what we want to do is we want to do a cell specific record. So the way that we do that is we actually have to go into a different type of mode. So first off, let's talk about the class. Now the class basically allows us to change the type of command. So right now we are in key command class. So this basically means stuff you would normally trigger with your keyboard. We can now basically map this to a MIDI foot controller, for example. So that's a key command style. But if we take a look inside of the class dropdown menu, you can see there's a variety of other types of modes we can actually switch out in this menu, but I'm gonna switch it into the key command mode because the that's where a variety of the commands that you're probably going to want to map will be occupied. So if we take a look at the command, this is where we can basically map the actual command we wanna launch. So if I drop down this menu, you can see right now we are running inside of global commands. But once again, we have a variety of different areas inside of logic live loops for the command types that we want to map. So for example, inside of global commands, we have all of the stuff you would normally have like stop, play, pause, all them types of things, record, all the stuff that you would find on the transport controls over here. Now we then have a secondary zone called live loops grid. So inside of Live Loops Grid, we have a majority of the controls that we would want to use inside of Live Loops Grid. Now, this is where it does get confusing because you would assume the record into cell function would be located inside of the Live Loops command area. But for some reason, it's actually inside of the global commands area. So if we take a look inside of the Live Loops Grid options, you can see this is all we have. We've got sort of like play, sort of like cue your scene, stuff like that. Uh, insert blank scenes, awesome stuff in that regard. But for actually performing, you're gonna have to go into the global commands inside of here. So we'll go up here, 
global commands, and then we'll drop down in this menu here, and we will look for record into cell. So if we just scroll around, and you can see it's right there, record into cell. So now we have actually selected the specific command that we now want to launch. So because we have already mapped our MIDI option over here, because what we did was we created a new parameter, and then we went into learn mode, selected the control, and then we clicked the button on our pedal, so it was all preset up, and then we changed the parameter controller assign. So because we've already done that, foot switch three should now record into a cell. So if we just move this out the way, and we select a blank cell, this tracks record armed. If I then press and hold this button, it's going to record into this cell, so check this out. So I'm holding down this button, and you can see it's recording into my Logic project, and then when I release the button, and press it again, it will then launch our loop. Now don't forget to check out my course using the link in the video description down below if you want to learn more about Logic Live Loops. I really hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below. I know it was a quick video, but I just wanted to quickly explain how you can go about setting up a MIDI controller inside of Logic Live Loops. I showed you a few ways to go about doing it. I didn't want to show you how to do a full comprehensive setup because everyone watching this video is going to have a different MIDI foot remote. They're going to have different requirements within their performance. So it would have been a super long video, which would have been really unnecessary. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I've been Ben Rollins, and I will see you in the next one.